George de Boer, you're from uh, TomTom. Uh, we're uh, here in, uh, well, beautiful Netherlands. We, 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 we look at ships, we look at uh, uh, people passing by. Uh, but uh, in this building, uh, a couple of hundred uh, developers are developing stuff. Uh, and amongst others with your uh, API, with your data, your TomTom uh, data. Um, first, why is this an event TomTom wants to be part of? Yeah, because... Um Everyone knows TomTom Tom for their navigation devices, and that's that's the brand that uh, rings a bell with with everyone when you talk about TomTom. Tom. But TomTom Tom nowadays is more than just navigation. Uh, we have sport watches nowadays. Uh, we are in automotive. Uh, we are supplying maps and all kinds of other data to smartphone companies. Uh, but we also have a solution for telematics. Um, so that's a more business-to-business -business solution that not that many people are still aware of. That we also have that as TomTom. Tom. And next to the fact that that's hardware that we supply, uh, we also supply the platform which is attractive for developers. So that's why we're here with, on the Hackathon, to make sure that the API community, the developers that love to work with APIs, know about our products and the integration possibilities. Yeah, so, so can we, uh, we, we come back to that later. So can you maybe tell me something more about... Uh, this business-to-business -business, uh, solution yeah, or technology yeah, 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 yeah. So first of all, we uh, we have, uh, as TomTom, we acquired a company, uh, say, uh, um, in 2008, um, uh, which was called the Data Factory, which was, which was in telematics, uh, because we thought, well, that's, there could be a good combination of a black box, which you can use for tracking and tracing and navigation at the same time. So instead of just making sure that you know where your, if you're a local plumber, for example, know where your vehicle is, that you can also start communicating with the driver. Uh, so after we did that acquisition, uh, we made a complete solution where we build in these kind of little devices. No one sees them, but they're perfectly shaped uh, because we're a design company as well. Um, but they're, they're fitted under the dashboard, uh, connected to the power of the vehicle, and this is allow allows us uh, to or the customer allows the customer to track the vehicle where the whereabouts because there's a GPS uh, receiver in there, there's a GPS modem in there for the communication to the TomTom platform, web fleet, um, and there's all kinds of integration possibilities. So we could connect, for example, um, sensors, but we could also connect uh, uh, FMS, which is a standard for trucks where you can get all kinds of fuel data. So you know about the consumption of the of the vehicle. So you can all can all together with this device and the, the driver terminal instead of the navigation device, you can get information on, on the whereabouts of the vehicle, statuses of the vehicle, but you can also talk to the driver via the screen. So we can send through the platform, we can send the work orders to that local plumber. So in the morning, um, in the Netherlands here, for example, we have uh, uh, utilities companies with service engineers that drive around all day visiting customers doing their orders. In the morning, they get the orders to their uh, uh, screen mm -hmm. uh, and they just go to the next order, they tap the order and they immediately navigate to that customer. But with that information, we also know when he started the order, when he will arrive at that customer. So nowadays with package deliveries and more and more where you can order your service engineer online, the customer wants to know when is that guy ringing yeah. at the doorbell. And not between 10 and uh, 15 hours yeah, or whatever yeah. it is. And, and the beauty is because TomTom, of course, also collects a lot of traffic information and has one of the most accurate routing algorithms, um, we're also taking into account traffic jams. So the estimated time of arrival is less estimated than it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we can inform, together with this whole solution of telematics, inform those customers when that engineer will be there. And well, during that, that this hackathon, you can think about a combination of the uh, uh, ball.com, you order something at ball.com, then you want to have it delivered, then you know exactly what the ETA will be for that customer. Um, but we also installed these devices in the, uh, the Schiphol buses, which drive from the terminal uh, to the long parking. Yeah. Um, and what you want to know as a, as, a, as a customer doing long parking on Schiphol is when, when will that bus arrive? Because normally it, it's there every 10 minutes. But with this information, you can you know um, uh, where the bus is and what the estimated time of arrival will be at the, the parking area, but also at the terminal. So if a flight comes in from Turkey with a lot of passengers, you can also make sure you have all those buses there to make sure you get everyone to the long parking. But also the other way around in the morning when that flight is, yeah. is supposed to leave. Hey, um, you are... Um, uh 
you have always been a technology uh, a company. Uh, is it easier for uh, companies that started off as a technology company to uh, embrace uh, the openness of the uh, of say the, the world of data uh, than other companies? Because that's where it, basically it's the, the openness and open source and open data, etc. is yeah. something that started, of yeah. course, in the, yeah. in the world of technology. Is it yeah. easier for you than for some of your colleagues? Uh, yeah. Well, if if you look at, for example, this hackathon, which is about open APIs and open data. Um, we uh, immediately already identified that we are way ahead of other companies uh, which now start to think about opening up their APIs. We have our API there for eight years already uh -huh. uh, and the documentation is, is available on the web as well. So it's open in that sense. Uh, and uh, it's also in our genes. So in that sense, we eat our own dog food. Uh, the APIs that we you built you built yourself on, we, on your we own build, API. We build our own apps based on our uh, own APIs. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, and uh, of course, then, when you, then you're a veteran in uh, API in the world of API and uh, data, etc. Um, what have you learned uh, during those last uh, eight years? How did it help you as a company? First of all, it gives us the possibility to, to remain a company which makes a scalable solution, which can be used throughout the world. So we build, we, we, because we cannot build a solution that's only suited for, for example, the waste management industry, or which is specific for the service engineer uh, industry. We can build a platform that does 80% of the functionality. What the openness of, of using the APIs together with our partners gives us, but especially gives the customers, is more functionality. So where there are companies which are very specialized in doing planning and optimization for waste management, they can easily integrate with our solution. And then one and one is three. And the customer is more, um, uh, uh, is more happy with the solution when, uh, where he would only bought our solution. Uh, so it gives us uh, more customer uh, happiness, uh, but of course, b because we can offer more functionality, it g also gives us a, a larger addressable market. Yeah, hey, um, and, uh, and and say um, uh, business-wise, because your what you what we see here is uh, you do a combination of software and uh, and hardware. hardware. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when someone uses your uh, API, what does that API say? What am I allowed to do with? Uh, with it commercially, for example. Uh, well, but that's a funny thing. Um, in um, if you look at the market, some of the companies uh, are not that open, and they have their APIs. You need to pay for the API. Uh, you don't get all the data which is available. In our model, uh, we have a customer, and the customer wants to be able to integrate. He pays us for the subscription and the hardware. So. He owns the data. Um, so we cannot say to them, you can only enter the data or, or, or look at the data via our user interface. Uh, they want an API and they want to make sure that we have all of that uh, data also available through the API. Uh, so from, from day one, all the data that we offer in our own user interface uh, on the online web fleet, uh, fleet management platform is also available through the API. So sending work orders, GPS positions, even the raw data on where where the buses in this case from Schiphol have been. Yeah, oh, that's really uh, that's really good. And you said, um, uh, okay, some of the, our partners, we are we we're ahead of, of what they are doing, so they're, they're beginning to do it. So, what do you um, uh, what do you say to them? Uh, why it's important to do? Because of those the, the facts that we can we are a company, although we are uh, the leading company in navigation throughout the world, uh, with four thousand employees uh, having offices all over the world on all the continents, uh, we cannot develop all the functionality yeah. ourselves at the speed that our economy is going at, at this moment. So we need those partners and that partner network, and that, that's probably also why it's my job, uh, to get those partners on board and become a TomTom -tom partner and develop with us 
um, because we're we're way faster and uh, we can we can help more customers than when we would do it all on our own. Yeah, and 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 does it help you uh, something like this? Does it help you as well to find uh, uh, new people to work for you? The, 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 is, is it the way to find talented people? Um, I would say so. I would say that this is also an, a, a good opportunity to scout uh, to see if there's developers that uh, are great in what they do, and if they don't have a job yet, which. <laughs> which is, of course, not, not very likely. <laughs> not <No>. very likely. <laughs> uh, see if they would like to, to work for TomTom. Tom, yes. Yeah, and um, uh, of, co of course, there's there's always an uh, 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 an aspect of risks as well. What are the risks of uh, uh, of working with open data and, and an API? Well, open open data is something. So, some people think that open data means that you can have access to everything and can see everything. Open data for and open APIs in, in our case yeah. means that we make sure that the API is available publicly. Uh, that doesn't mean that you have access to all the data. The data remains with the customer and the customer decides if he wants to grant you access to that data. So it's not that we have open data in the sense that all our customer yeah. data is available for everyone. Yeah. Open in our sense means um, the uh, the APIs and the description of the APIs is available to developers. They can develop their solution uh, with those APIs. Um, and the customer decides if he wants to have all or some of his information uh, also available in a third-party application. Yeah. Because that is the, the uh, cause privacy is, an, is, yeah. is the important yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. thing, of course. And that is also why we are the only ones in the fleet management industry which have a, a ISO 27001 certification, which in normal men's terms means that our platform is very secure and we make sure it, it stays secure. And we also apply, uh, apply all the privacy rules that are out there. Um, so we take very good care of, of the data that is in our platform. Uh, and because of that, we can also uh, have governmental agencies, for example, as our customers. So we have fire departments driving around with our devices. Mm -hmm. So they rush to the scene and are there uh, the fastest to, to extinguish the fire. Yeah. How have you as, as a company, because uh, you, you, you were, of course, really uh, early with, with, with your, your products and... Uh, and then suddenly uh, uh, other people started doing sort of same thing, uh, software uh, only. And a lot of people thought, well, this is going to be really hard for uh, Tom Tom uh, to be more than a, a one-trick pony. So how, how has your company uh, innovated through, through, through those years? How, how, do you, how do you do that to stay in an open and innovative uh, company? Yeah, it's not an easy, it's not an easy task. And uh, it's, uh, I've, I've been in TomTom Tom for eight years and I've seen the change. And you could say that, that I, I always say in TomTom, Tom, I work for TomTom Tom now eight years, but it, you should multiply by four because that's how fast the market is moving and how fast we need to also move uh, to, to keep up with uh, developments. Uh, and one day uh, you have one company as your competitor and the other one, uh, other day you have a different comp uh, company as your competitor. So we cannot just develop a product uh, ourselves as a one product. Uh, we need to um, uh, keep on e evolving. Uh, and that's also why we decided in the past already very early that we should differentiate to automotive, that we should buy a mapping company and go into the mapping um, and that we should buy a, a telematics company and doing uh, go in telematics, and that's why today we are um, uh, into into sport watches. Yeah, I, I, I look at what it was because the other a couple of weeks ago I saw something, and I think that's one of the initiatives of one of your founding fathers. The map code, the thing called map code. Map code. I, yes. I really like that. To yeah. Be quite honest. Yeah. 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 Because it's it's so uh, for for uh, uh, who, who doesn't know, uh, of course, in, in in countries like like the Netherlands, everything is a road and has numbers, etc. But of course, there are other places in the world where that's not the case. Uh, but as well, uh, when you're in a city and you want to mark, uh, have a look, uh, have, have a, a location that's really um, uh, a need, you can use uh, this thing called uh, a map code, and you have an ex an exclusive code for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, piece of uh, yeah, of yeah. the earth yeah so it's something that the the, the two founders of, of one of two of the four founders came up with Harald Gordijn and, and Pieter Gehle uh, as a as a first to code every piece of the world in a maximum of seven digits yeah so for uh, this area for example uh, which is more dense in in, in uh, 
the population. It's only four code, four four digits, so easy to remember. You like a, like a short postcode, postcode. Yeah. Um, uh, and then use that code instead of this long uh, latitude and longitude coordinates uh, as a reference. But to make sure that it's uh, because if we would make it TomTom proprietary, uh, it also wouldn't work it. Uh, because you you want to have it on multiple devices and yeah. and, and websites and your mobile device etc. So they put it into a foundation and made it really public, uh, like open source. Uh, and now it's uh, available and supported by by uh, uh, more companies throughout the world. And we hope that this is something that um, takes off because it makes your and my life easier again. Yeah, I love, where we only need I quite to love it. And yeah. I, of course, and now I want the integration to uh, all, all the other apps I use as well. But that's okay. And, uh, hopefully, that's a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, for your story. And uh, let's see what all the developers come yeah, up with. Yeah. 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 We're very curious uh, which apps will come out there in uh, 30 hours. Yeah. Thank yeah. you.